Sportsman's Adventures with Captain Rick Murphy, presented by Yamaha. You know, I'm almost 50 years old and I still enjoy catching them. And it doesn't matter whether it's a 20 inch trout or a 10 inch trout like this. It's just about enjoying being in the outdoors and getting a bite. On today's adventure, we'll be fishing out of Key Largo. Located just minutes by car from mainland Florida, Key Largo is sandwiched between Everglades National Park to the west and North America's only living coral barrier reef to the east. With John Pennycamp Coral Reef State Park in their backyard, locals consider Key Largo the diving capital of the world. But the island is nearly as famous as a sport fishing destination. Today, we have a chance to explore some of that great fishing. Hey, welcome to Sportsman's Adventures. And I gotta tell you, you know, this time of year, in the winter time, the flats guy, the inshore guy, I mean, we get crushed with all these different cold fronts. But you guys have asked us through emails to the information shows, the shows, the how-to shows are very popular with you guys. And so what we wanted to do is we wanted to take a sea trout. It's a fish that we catch throughout the whole state of Florida. So whether you're up in Tampa Bay or Sob Choppy or south of there, down in off of Fort Myers or here in Flamingo or even up off of Stewart, we want to dissect Florida and how to fish the cold fronts as they approach. The water temperatures you can see, I'm in a Yamaha snowmobile jacket. This fish is really cold, 60 degree water temperature according to the hummingbird. We've had a cold front come through the last couple days and it's really cold. But we're going to teach you some basic ways of thinking that's going to allow you to become a better fisherman between the cold fronts. All right, stay tuned. Make sure you watch what's going on here on Sportsman's Adventures. Go back, little trout. There he is. <laughs> you really got to slow your fishing down. I mean, it is really cold. Now understand, here's what happens. You got to be able to evaluate before you leave the dock the night when you're putting your fishing plan together, what side of the cold front you're on. And let me explain what I mean. If it's the cold front is approaching, then your water temperatures are gonna still really be warm. Once the cold front comes through, some of the key factors that keep the water cool is the northerly wind, northwest, north or northeast. So even though you might have warm temperatures air-wise, it's getting 70 in Miami, it's still going to keep the water itself cool because it's got a cold little bite to it. So that's some of the things that you need to consider. Once it gets any east, or certainly southeast, you get more of a tropical type of breeze, the humidity goes back up, and your nighttime air temperatures are gonna begin to warm up. This is when you might wanna go fish for the glory species, the redfish and the snook. And if you're lucky enough to find some tarpon, remember that 74 is the magic number for those tarpon. Anything cooler than that, you might find them, but good luck catching. Let me get this guy back so he can go down there and tell all his buddies that I'm in town. Sometimes you need a little noise. You know, these trout, they'll come to the popping cork. And the reason why they like that popping cork is the chug that it makes. I use the popping corks as a traditional trout cork. It's green. The green ones, when you go in the tackle store, are weighted. I like them better because I can throw them a lot further when I have a light jig head, especially on those windy days. But again, it's nice and cold, 60 degree water temperatures. The fish are very lethargic. That popping sound makes them come to it. And when they come to it, two feet below is gonna be a live shrimp on a hookup quarter ounce jig head. 
Very basic, very simple. Now the trout, you gotta understand, it's the single most popular fish fish for here in the state of Florida. We sell a lot of shrimp, a lot of popping corks. Guys use them to fish off of the beaches, as well as off of piers, as well as off of rocks. That's the whole key. That's why it's such a popular fish, whether it's the west coast or the east coast. Everybody wants to catch the old Johnny Trout. Oh, this guy feels like he could be a good cork soaker. Oh boy. Nice trout here. This is what, you know, we, all we did is we made a few casts, located the fish, staked out the boat so that we don't drift through them or away from them, and then we just experiment. Now, as this show goes, we're gonna take and maybe replace the uh, cork, take the cork off. We might leave the cork on and put a soft plastic, a Bass Assassin or a Trigger X onto this and keep the same principle. This is how I learned how to fish a variety of different lures. When I got it going on with live shrimp, you can't always depend on finding the live shrimp or you might run out. So what are you gonna do when you run out? You gotta have plan B. Nice speckled trout. Now the FWC has just increased this fish. They've done such a great job of managing it that now we're able to catch the trout in all the regions, north, central, and the south region, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. No closed season on Johnny Trout. That's what Captain Page called it. Sportsman's Adventures is brought to you by the Florida Keys and Key West. Come as you are. Yeti, wildly stronger. Keep ice longer. Costa Del Mar, see what's out there. Yamaha, reliability starts here. Catch the latest at Rapala.com. Yamaha invites you to the Reliable Choice sales event. When you choose to cruise in reliable style, Yamaha is going to reward you with another choice, absolutely free. Purchase any new eligible Yamaha outboard and choose between a full five years of Yamaha limited warranty protection, or if you prefer, choose dealer credit up to $2,000 towards purchase of goods or services. Celebrate your freedom of choice with Yamaha reliability. This offer is only available for a limited time and it's all happening at your local Yamaha outboard dealers now. For years, they've quietly taken you where the fish are. But now the silence is about to break. With the incredible iPilot link, your Minn Kota and Hummingbird can communicate with each other. So you can hold on a spot like an electronic anchor, record and return to waypoints and paths, follow any depth contour, and more. All automatically and all from your Hummingbird or the link remote. They talk and you'll be speechless. Welcome to the Inner Circle. Rotating coverage up to 300 feet gives you a detailed 360 degree view of structure, contour changes, and fish. So you can see them before they see you. Incredible 360 imaging, available for your transom and now for your bow, putting you at the center of the 360 revolution, only from Hummingbird. Continuing the revolution, faster, drier, even better built. Designed around Yamaha's latest technology outboards. Still built by the same craftsmen and anglers who launched the Bay Boat Revolution. Whether chasing world records, or time on the water with the family, or anything in between, there's a new Pathfinder model for you. Pathfinder, number one for a reason, still. Today's Coast of Cool Place and Moment is right here at the Caribbean Club in Key Largo. Now what comes to mind about this place that makes it so cool is it's rich in history. So let's talk a little bit about that. It was built 
by Carl Fisher, the real estate promoter and auto parts guy in the 1938. He sold it to the Crone family, purchased it after Carl Fisher died. In 1955, they had a bad fire and it burned to the ground. And then in 1963, the Whitehurst family, they actually bought it and rebuilt it and really turned it into what it is today and is currently running it. Now, what comes to mind or what I really like about it is the movie Key Largo was filmed right here as well as the screenplay was written right there at that very bar. The other thing that they also have had here was Blood and Wine, which was starring Jack Nicholson and Jennifer Lopez, was filmed here as well. So when you come here, you'll feel the presence of all those great movie stars, but more importantly, you'll get the feel of what it feels like to be in the Keys and watch that beautiful sunset go down right here over Florida Bay. You know, I'm almost 50 years old and I still enjoy catching them. And it doesn't matter whether it's a 20 inch trout or a 10 inch trout like this. It's just about enjoying being in the outdoors and getting a bite. And that's one of the reasons why we live here in this great state of Florida is one, the variety of species that we can catch. And certainly, even on a bad winter day, <laughs> Those guys up in Minneapolis at Rapala right now, they're freezing their hoo-hahs off. It's 22 to 17 is the low, up to 28 today is the high. Guys, I'm sorry, but I might have got to take this jacket off here in a minute. Oh! You know, the other thing that makes a trout so cool is you can do him from a variety of different boats. You can come out here in an old Hughes like this one. You can come out in a new Maverick or even a Pathfinder Bay boat. But what's really neat is that you can do it in a kayak. You can do it off the shore, off of a jetty, maybe even off of piers in the beaches. That's what makes a trout so popular is he can be caught just about anywhere with any type of boat, tackle, people, places, and things. That's what it's about. There we go. Bobby down. Uh-oh. What happened? Oh, he got foul hooked for a second. He rolled up into the leader, got turned sideways. You know, the other thing that I like about popping corks and fishing a live shrimp with the jig head is like this hookup is what a great way to introduce your kids to fishing. Every single cast, one shrimp, two pops, one trout. It's really that simple. And kids, you know, they don't have an attention span that lasts very long. And so what I found with Ridge and Colin when they were little is you had to take them where there was, they had a lot of action. Trout was always what we would go do. It's not so hot. It's just perfect. All you need, bucket of chicken, six dozen shrimp, three or four popping corks, and a whole big box of patience. That's what seems to work best in Murphy's Laws boat. All right, Mr. Trout. Today, Colin and Ridge aren't here, but they're thinking about it. Oh. It doesn't take long. A couple little pops. You know, when you're fishing trout, they got real soft mouths, so you don't want to be cranking them in real hard like you would a bass on the surface, because you'll just simply tear the hooks right out of their face. Now, we're going to talk a little bit more about the tackle and all the different ways that we fish here in Florida for trout. But in the meantime, you're going to have to stay tuned and see what we have because there is a gazillion different ways to fish for the spotted sea trout. Sportsman's Adventures is brought to you by Minn Kota, anywhere, anytime. Humminbird, simply, clearly, better. Florida, the fishing capital of the world. La Jolla Resort, a place for families and fishermen. Suffix Lines, the world's most hardcore fishing line. It's 200 streamlined horsepower of Yamaha forward thinking. The all new F200 inline four stroke. Whether you're an offshore angler, pontoon cruiser, bay boater, or walleye hunter, the responsive and fuel efficient F200 combines amazing power and versatility in one incredibly compact and lightweight package. 
the all-new F200. Legendary Yamaha reliability and the freedom of forward thinking. You know there's more to it than luck. There's fishing the right bait, the water temperature, the wind, the season, and then there's the boat. We'll put it simply, the boat matters. To own a contender is to own the best sport fishing boat on the market, period. Contender offers the most comprehensive model range with bigger, faster, and more fuel efficient boats than the competition. There's only one choice for serious anglers. Contender Boats, performance through innovation. We tried beating it senseless, bending it in half, and punishing it with extreme temps, corrosive salt water, and blistering UV rays. And all Talon did was ask for more. So we wanted to know what Talon's breaking point really was. We'll let you know if we ever find it. Talon, born tough, tested tougher. Suffolk Safe 32 is constructed with seven strands of Dyneema and a single strand of Gore Performance Fiber. It's the roundest, longest casting line in the world. It offers superior abrasion resistance so you can fish it anywhere. It's the strongest, most sensitive, and durable small diameter braid ever to hit the water. Nice fish, Brett. Thanks. Suffolk's 832. Always use the best line. It's been said that a bad day of fishing is better than a good day at the office. But down here in the Florida Keys, we have to disagree. Because with over 200 of the world's best charter boat captains and guides, there's no such thing as a bad day of fishing. The Florida Keys and Key West. Thank you for joining us today on Sportsman's Adventure. And be sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram and Twitter to keep up with all of our adventures, contests, and appearances. You don't even ever have to miss an episode. You can find full episodes of Sportsman's Adventures plus other tips and techniques on our YouTube channel. So head over to our website, sportsmansadventures.com, where you can find all the information you need to stay connected. Well, as you know, Rick, fishing in the Florida Keys is a unique experience in itself, and there are several mini restaurants in the area that will cook your catch to order and prepare it several different ways on the menu. So whether you're fishing offshore or in the backcountry, we have a wide variety of fish year-round that are really tasty. Now tell people that may be sitting in the snow right now, tell them what the ambiance or what they could potentially expect when they sit down at that restaurant. It doesn't get any better down here. When you sit down at that restaurant with the fish that you just brought in off the back of the boat that day, it's only hours old. And that's something that's unique in itself because only here in the Florida Keys that I know of can you really do that. We have sundowners in Key Largo. We've, you know, we've got snappers. We've got the pilot house, uh, which is all in Key Largo. And then, you know, head, head from that area and go all the way down. All right, one last question. What's your favorite fish to cook? My favorite fish? Well, I would have to say yellowtail, but only because we're really not supposed to be bringing snook into the restaurant and doing all of it. That's, you know, <laughs> but definitely yellowtail. I mean, you know, yellowtail is awesome. You've got mutton snapper, you've got mahi-mahi, which we call dolphin down here, and uh, fresh tuna. That's another, you know, good fresh tuna, actually, you can have right here in the, in the filet table. Now, what I want to do is certainly catching a lot of trout is the key to the game when you go fishing with kids. But I think it's really important that we talk about all the different rigs and techniques that we could typically use. Now, whether you're in the Panhandle up in Destin or you're in Jacksonville fishing in some of those shallow creeks, really the applications or the way that you would want to fish or the way that you think about catching a trout is really the same. All you've got to do is adjust your tackle. So let's talk a little bit about that. We're using simply a quarter ounce hookup jig with a piece of 30 pound suffix fluorocarbon leader. The key to this is that it's really important to make sure you have a long enough leader so that if you do hook something other than a trout, one, you can adjust your bobber 
Or number two, you don't have such a light leader that you might get broke off or the fish might rub you off like a snook might do. So I like to use about two and a half to three feet of leader so that I can adjust my cork. If I move in on the grass flats, I can simply pull my cork down and make it much shallower than I am when I'm fishing on the sand and in the channels. Now speaking of the sand and the channels, when it's really cold, you're gonna wanna move to the sand. And by moving to the sand, that's where the fish go. It's a little deeper, but it's more of a consistent uh, water temperature. It holds more consistent water temperature. Once the weather starts to warm up then the fish might move to potholes that are staging in and around grass flats like you would find in late February and March. When that happens you might switch over to a bucktail jig that's a little bit more weedless. The reason why the bucktail works so well is because it can be fished very slow but it also starts to simulate or imitate a bait fish like a pilchard, which is what's gonna happen in March. Those pinfish and fin fish are gonna move up on the flats and the trout are gonna stage there. But until that happens in January and February, you're gonna wanna use a variety of different soft plastics if you're not using shrimp. We certainly like bass assassins. It's really important to have a variety of different colors or you can try scented plastics as well like the Trigger X that we have right here. The gray ghost shrimp simply looks exactly like a shrimp is supposed to look and you just, it's fish it exactly the same way. By using a hookup that has uh, double barbs, it's going to hold these plastics onto the, onto the hook a lot better than a single barbed type of, of jig head. Now a couple other things that come to mind is for you guys that like to throw hard plastic baits like Rapalus, I'm going to tell you my favorite way to fish for trout is a suspending plug. Trout are a little bit like tarpon. They like to get up underneath the plug, silhouetted against a pretty blue sky like we have today, and then they're going to come up underneath it and knock it up out of the water. The plugs that come to mind, Rapala Subwalks. Try to match the color water that you have in that system that you're fishing. If the pilchards have moved up on the flats, then you're gonna wanna try a twitch and wrap which looks and shape the silhouette of a pilchard. Those are a few ideas. If you wanna throw top water plugs, then you might wanna use a skitter walk like this big one that makes a lot of click and clack and a walk the dog style of bait. These are some of the techniques that I use every single day in trout fishing, as well as some of the other ideas that I use for fishing snook and reds. So you try them, send me an email, let me know how it's gonna work for you. But in the meantime, I'm gonna get back to catching. Man, I'm telling you, Here's what you also need to remember. You know, with a popping cork, if you, your rod is a seven foot lever, and I always tell my customers this all the time, this is a seven foot lever. If you make a 40 foot cast out there and you're popping with the rod up in the air, guess what you're doing? You're pulling your angle of your popping cork up like this. Well, guess what? That's not gonna give you a good crisp type of pop, which is what is happening here. We're using the popping cork to attract the trout. The trout goes to the noise of the popping cork and then just two feet below that he finds that trigger X or a live shrimp on a jig head and that's how I'm getting the bites. So when you get ready to pop that cork, keep your rod tip down low so that your pull point is about three or four inches above the surface and you'll get a good crisp pop out of that suffix line. All right, let me put him back. Sportsman's Adventures is brought to you by Custom Trailer Manufacturer Ameritrail, VMC, your expert in hooks, Williamson Lures for the Pelagic Playground, Maverick, Fish the Legend, and Contender Boats. Now my favorite knot for a lead-headed jig head certainly is the uni knot. And the reason why I like the uni knot so well is because it gives me a loop. And what that loop does is it allows the jig head to give me more action as well as it allows the jig head to sink faster. All you gotta do is make a loop and then a secondary loop on top of the line going to the reel. Going with the tag in inside of that loop. 
the smaller the diameter of the leader, the more times you have to go inside of the loop with the tag in. Six to eight really works good on 10 pound. Once you get up over 20, you want to go six to four times. The thing that's so positive and the reason why the uni knot is my favorite is because if it does slip when I'm putting that maximum amount of pressure on it, the one thing that I can do is know that it's not going to break in the knot. And all I gotta do is trim that off. And for those of you that are not sure exactly what it's supposed to look like, it's supposed to look like a hangman's noose before they cinch it down. I'm getting ready to cinch this down on old Mr. Trout about two seconds from now. Nice. So let's talk a little bit about how you're gonna pop the popping cork. I like to pop the popping cork two times. Pop, pop, look at how little that trout is, man. You gotta really like his attitude because he is not much bigger than the popping cork itself and he's really trying to eat that trigger X. That's cool. Jumping, shaking his head just like a big one does. But the popping cork, pop it two times, rod tip down, crisp pops, pop, pop, and then pause, which allows the jig to go from this to back down and falling. That's when they're gonna bite it on the fall. When you see the cork go down, all you gotta do is just reel. That's the beauty about fishing braided lines like this suffix. There's zero stretch, just reel. Ain't he pretty? Looks like a trout, just smaller. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on, Mr. Trout. Captain Rick, thanks for giving us some how-to tips. Good things to know when you're planning your next sportsman's adventures. Keep up with the latest Sportsman's Adventures news and events by logging into our website at sportsmansadventures.com and following us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Coming up next week on Sportsman's Adventures with Captain Rick Murphy. There you go. Hey! Up there, my friend. There we go. That's what you come to Costa Rica for right there, guys.